Yeah. Are there any aspiring alcoholics out there this evening? <laughs> okay, I got a little piece of advice. After three beers, if you're not mildly optimistic, quit. All right. I go into this joint called the Purple Por uh, Porpoise, and it's down in uh, Florida, Gainesville, as a matter of fact. And I want to drink beer and eat French fries and oysters. Uh, so I go in and I order up, and I'm drinking beer now, and I'm. Wait, looking for something to do while I'm waiting for the food, and there's a couple across the room in a booth, and they're real cozy and, you know, real connected, and I think, ain't love grand, I think. They have their heads together. Uh, she's strikingly attractive. He's a regular guy. She grins at me. I grin back. She grins at me again. I grin back. She thinks that I don't know she's jerking them off underneath the table. <laughs> All of a sudden, the food is set in front of me. I go to the waiter, can I get some uh, french fries? I mean, some uh, salt and pepper with this. He comes back with three peppers and two salts and goes, and he looks at me, he looks at the table and goes, knock yourself out, pal. <laughs> Another bar fly. Another bar fly with a vintage motorcycle wants a chilled mixed drink. Kind of like a milkshake with vodka. The bartender doesn't really want to be bothered. Another bar fly wants to be your pal, wants to hang around, and wants you to look at his vintage motorcycle that runs great but needs a coat of paint. Another bar fly wants something to crawl on. He wants to ride his vintage motorcycle down to the lake and look for all the lost years and scenes but nobody's around anymore. Some got old. Some got dead. Some just grew up. So another barfly finishes his malted booze and beats it, draws heat from the regulars, comments, rubbernecks, cruising for a bruising. He left right at the right time. But then some legitimate old veteran comes in from some miserable war, looking tired and beat. And he shows up and it's his birthday and he hasn't had a drink since New Year's. And he's freshly fallen off the wagon and he remembers everything. And the bartender makes him a house specialty, hands him a lit sparkler and puts on the Rolling Stones. And then the old vet brings everything back to life in the bar. You know, as I sat in my beloved dive years ago around supper time, last evening in the middle of the May, I took a good look around in the harsh glare from the street and sighed. The place looked especially worn and beaten and it smelled badly. Of course it did. There's no cigarette smoke anymore to mask the stench of stale beer. I looked up at the ceiling and it appeared that somebody had managed to defy the laws of gravity and vomited up repeatedly all the way from one end of the bar to the men's room. So I got up to relieve myself and I went in the restroom, which I knew upon exiting the soles of my shoes would stick and reek of urine. Sitting back, I looked at my last little blonde bartender. God, how many of them had they been over the years? And they'd all been so kind to you, they took care of you, and this one wouldn't even take your money for the beer, so I would leave it on the bar at the end of the night as a tip instead. She was leaving now soon. She had completed her second degree at the nearby college where you taught. Yep, it was time. It was death of a dive. You managed to squander most of your adult years in this bar, on this bar stool. And now you were almost always the oldest guy in the place. You were now officially the old guy. I remember years ago seeing guys like you in this place and thinking, God, when I'm that old, I hope I'm not hanging around in a place like this. Well, guess what? But you know, to be honest, it was kind of funny. It didn't hurt that much, because it was time thinking, well, I guess it's time to find an old guy bar. You recall when you were the age of most of the patrons in the dive, you hung around old men bars most of the time. 
and you fit in even back then. Well, now, hell, you belonged. So I shrugged down my beer, left a tip, smiled to the regulars and said, good evening, and walked out the door into a beautiful spring evening at dusk, and the air smelled sweet, and I never felt better in my life.